we're back on the desk again because I want to upgrade my live streaming setup a little bit so I can start doing live streams again. And as you can see, I've got the YOLO Box Pro all in one live streaming doohickey here on my table. So let's open it up and have a play. I'll have a full review of this coming soon once I've had a good chance to go through all of its settings and features and test everything out. Naturally, I'll be using it to live stream in the coming weeks as well, so this video is more of just an unboxing and a first impressions. I've got a couple of cameras here, as you can see, and some HDMI cable somewhere. <laughs> so we'll have a play around and see what it can do. But first, we need to get it out of the box and have a look at it. So this isn't just a basic video switcher like the Feel World Life Pro L1 that you've seen here on the channel before. This is a full all-in-one unit with an Android based operating system that can actually stream out directly to YouTube and other platforms without the need for a computer. The first thing we see in the box is a very uh, surprising and nice inclusion. We have a tempered glass screen protector. Of course, it does have a USB output as well so that you can use it in software like OBS and there's an HDMI output so you can watch the playback on a larger display while you're streaming. But this is the entire size of the built-in display so you can actually get a decent view on all your cameras and your interface and whatever you're doing. Now, YOLO Live, the company that makes this, says it supports up to six video sources in total. And on the back here, we've got three HDMI and one USB input for a webcam or another capture device, and it can also play back files from the SD card on the little slot on the front. For audio, you've got both mic in and line in. So if you just want to plug in a wireless live, you can do that, or you can take a line out from a mixer or another audio device if you're doing something like a podcast and want to be able to mix microphones of multiple people talking simultaneously. It also apparently supports some basic internal audio mixing with up to three channels from either the HDMI ports, the line in or mic in or SD card video files. And as well as the ports already mentioned, we've got a type C USB on the end for power. We've got a headphone output for monitoring and we also have an ethernet port. And unlike the ethernet port on the Live Pro, this one can actually be used for connecting to your network and streaming straight out to YouTube, Facebook, or wherever. On the front, we've got the full-sized SD card that you saw before that supports video or PDF files. And you can also use it to record your live stream to H.264. And there's a SIM card slot here that supports up to 4G letting you live stream from pretty much anywhere you can get a signal. Also in the box, we have a little manual. We have a USB Type-C to Type-C, and we've got a USB Type-C to Type-A cable. We also have a SIM card ejector, a little Allen key. Yeah, that will fit through the holes here. So we've got a little monitor bracket as well. And a quick guide. Oh, so there is a QR code on here that you can scan in, which, let's see, actually, where does that take you? And... There's our code. And that takes us to YOLO Box Pro Frequently Asked Questions. And it's not designed for a vertical screen. There we go. We'll go horizontal. So yeah, but right. I don't think there's too much in there that we need to worry about. So we'll pop the phone over there. We'll move this out of the way and then we'll plug it in. So the uh, the observant ones amongst you might have noticed that the Panasonic G80 has morphed into a Nikon D7000. Um, apparently it turns out that I have no micro <laughs> HDMI cables spare and handy that aren't in use. Uh, but I do have a mini HDMI one, which is what this takes. Fortunately, the GH5 takes full-size HDMI, uh, which is handy. But right, so let's plug this in and uh, see what it does, and I'll probably zoom you in and turn these lights down. Oh, we do have to hit power as well, but I will uh, I will turn the lights down so that you can see the screen. There we go, we have power. Oh, I'm gonna need light for the cameras, aren't I? Never mind. So here we are going through the setup. We've got English. I am a <laughs> Itlis Halifax. I'm assuming that's the one in Canada and not the one in Yorkshire. There we go, London. Okay. There was an Eric. Oh, right, because we're not on the internet yet. Um, right, we're going to go monitor mode for now because I need to find a way to plug you into the network. But as you can see, 
when it comes up. Oh, these are our, this is telling you where it is. So this is your live streaming control area. This is your output. And I will out brighten that up a little bit. It won't let me bring it up again now. Oh, there we go. So there you've got your, your live stream area that shows you your output. Here are your input signals and, oh, you're not on. It knows it's connected. Why are you? Oh, battery's low. <laughs> that would do it. Alrighty, I'm going to go uh, charge up some more cables or try and find another micro HDMI cable. Then I'll be back. Alrighty, so I've got this powered up again and I'm uh, trying to create an account <laughs> on YOLO Live and it's just, it's not accepting it. So we're going to go into monitor mode again and we're going to turn this camera on and this camera on i actually managed to find a micro hdmi cable here you can see we can switch between camera one and camera two yes that is a uh a chucky butter well here you can see we've got two hdmi sources we've got this one and we've got this one so we can add another video source from SD card. All right, so here are our apparently eight sources, more than six. So we got three HDMI, USB, SD card video one and two, or a live stream. So you can pull in somebody else's live stream if you're doing some kind of collaboration, or you can pull in a PDF file. Here we've got our layers for our overlays. We can share, but we're in monitor mode, so we can't share. Uh, audio settings. So we've got our built-in sort of mixer here. And I'm going to turn this off. This is AFV. This is audio follows video. And what happens is right now, if I'm on HDMI one, it will pull the audio from the microphone built into that camera, which is just off to the left. If I hit HDMI two, the audio will switch to the built in microphone that's in that camera over there. We don't want that. So what we want to do is we want to have it pick a single input device and then no matter which camera we go to it always uses the same one and we can even turn that off completely so that any input would be coming in through the mic which isn't plugged in right now so we'll leave it on hdmi one we can plug in well mic line hdmi one two or three usb a or type c input um, i don't know if it supports usb audio interfaces um, it would be great if i could plug my behringer euphoria straight into this I'll have to experiment with that and give it a try for the full review. Or you can pick your SD card videos that you've got queued up or your live stream input if you're pulling from somewhere else. This is the scoreboard display. This is if you're, you know, live streaming and covering some kind of sport or game or whatever. You can increment your, well, let's bring that on. So there you got like your scoreboard. What does it say? 2018 FIFA World Cup um i'm sure you can change that somewhere yeah there it is so you can change your game name your fonts your text color your background color um and the names of the teams but as each team scores you can add points to either side you can even add a timer you can set which period it is if it's a game that has periods um yeah and that's that so i, I probably won't be messing with that you might be able to hear a fan just kicked in so it does have a fan when it gets a bit warm, when it's been on for a little while, but it's pretty quiet. You might not even hear it at all on this because I'm using a directional shotgun mic and this is well outside the axis of the microphone. And we've also got here that it can't load because we're not online, uh, which is your, your live stream. But we can set our video source switching mode here. Uh, click to switch or double click to switch. SD card, continue playing when switching or resume first frame and pause when switching or pause. When... So this is for when you're playing video files off an SD card. And let me, I think they're on here. Does that just, oh, I turned it off. There we go. So we have an SD card hole. Does this fit in here or does it? No, no, this replaces that. So then that goes in. Okay, so I don't know how I feel about this because now that I've taken this out to put an SD card in there, I could very easily lose this and this isn't going to fit in there with that in there. I mean, it's nice that if you're not using it, it's got a nice little dust cover, but I would have preferred to go slightly bigger and turn it into a tray, like a SIM tray, and then you could slot the whole thing in um, and then it's covered up. But we've got an SD card in there right now, so let's add a video source. 
uh, SD card video one. There should be two videos on here. There we go. So this is my last video with the Xtool D1. Um, and then we'll add another video source. This was some footage I shot last weekend at Locative on the drone. Oh, apparently it doesn't like... Can we swap this one over? Oh, so that's my video from last week. Uh, SD card. Apparently, there are certain formats it doesn't like. So I guess it won't play H.265. Um, but yeah, so continue playing when switching. If you keep an eye on this in the bottom, as I switch to others, it will carry on playing in the corner as if it's a live video stream. Um, if I hit pause when switching, you'll see now that it stops. If I switch back to it, it carries on. Very handy if you're doing like reaction videos to something. So if you're reacting to someone else's video and, and you want to, you know, sort of stop it part way through and add your commentary, you can just do that and it'll pause it, you know, and go to you while you're talking. Um, or you can set it to resume first frame and pause when switching. So I let's see what happens. All right. So each time you switch away, it goes back to the first frame and then pauses. So if we leave this playing until it's on a different shot. Any second now. There we go. And now we go there. You see it pauses and goes back right back to the beginning. But we'll set it to continue playing when switching. And then we've got our SD card management. So we can see how much is used on the SD card. We have program out this. I think this is related more to the external um, HDMI monitor. So if you've got an external monitor plugged into this, you can have it set to show all of this, like just your final output, or you can have it set to show everything at once, but on a bigger display. Uh, video source transition, so we can swap that over to a fade. And fade between cameras, or we can wipe between cameras. Translation, shift one out. Well, that way. <laughs> Window slice. That's kind of neat. We got zooms. That's quite cool. We got a cross zoom. Squeeze. Yeah, that's the bit 80s. Flip page. Oh, very early 90s Photoshop, just when everyone learned how to do a page curl. And cube. I don't know why, but I like it. Oh, especially because if you look, see the reflection in the bottom of it? As it switches, the footage is reflected upside down. Yeah, it, it's corny and cheesy and crappy, but I, I love it. <laughs> but I'll probably just go to a straight cut. Because normally, you know, when you're switching, and there is about half a second delay after you press it before it goes that way. I wish there was a better manual for this, but I, I, I can understand why there isn't. It's, it's, it's frustrating that there isn't a better manual or any at all really, but because it is Android based and the software is constantly evolving, then any manual that they put together is gonna to be out of date by the time it gets to print. And coding settings, so we can set constant bitrate, constant quality, variable bitrate, we can set the bitrate and the FPS and it goes 20, 24, 25, 29. See, it does 29.97, but it doesn't do 23.98. There's a little record switch now. Oh, there we go. Uh, so every three and a half gig, I guess because it's FAT32, every three and a half gig, it's going to start saving to a new file. So I'll hit record and I'll leave it recording. And I don't know if you can pick that up, but the little dot in the corner is blinking to tell me that it's recording. Um, recording limits. So there you go. Recording is saved every 10 minutes or continuously. And that is pretty much it. So let's look at these overlays because this is one of the things that I wanted to look at. Um, so we can add an image overlay. I don't have any images on the SD card, so I'm not going to worry about that for now. I'll go back. We'll go lower third and there are some built in. I, I'm guessing there must be a way that you can add custom ones uh so here we can go oh uh john aldred subtitle 
And oh, no, I want to change. How do I long press? Yeah, edit long press and edit. So now we can change the fonts. Oops. To let's try. Yeah, let's try that one. I wonder if you can install more fonts on this. Uh, title size. Generally, I want the title to be bigger than the than that, but. Yeah, there we go. Uh, subtitle fonts. Oh, so you can change the fonts for both independently. Try that one. There we go. Make it a little bit bigger. There we go. Subtitle offsets. Ah, okay. Oh, that's cool. So you can set up an offset for where the two piece, the two um, little titles are. I'm waiting just the scale of the whole thing. So now if I do that, can you? All right, so you click to drag it to where you want it. So if we really want it lower, then we want it down there. Hit done. All right, so I tap that, and it fades on. I tap it again, and it fades off. That's pretty cool. We've also got the countdown timer. So, you know, at the beginning of your stream, if you decide to go on early, um, which is a good thing to do because it, it lets you get an audience coming in um while you're preparing rather than just hitting live and you've got zero viewers this uh this gives people a warning so we can just do this and then it will play that for 10 minutes i guess so if i tap that there we go that's the full thing and your timer starts down and uh yeah and it starts down each time you uh Reset it. So you could set one of these up, say a countdown timer. You can add that one. You can put edit that. And you know, if you need to go make a coffee or go to the bathroom. Set this to, you know, five minutes. And there you go. So if I want to go away, I can just do that. I, I wonder if you can tie this into audio. I don't see any way on this. But until I can actually log it in, um, there are some features that are missing from here. Because in overlays, there's supposed to be a web overlay um, and some other things. So I'm guessing, there's our full screen view. So I'm guessing that... Uh, those are in firmwares that are newer than the one that's on the device. Can I bring this down? No. See, it's got the Android pull-down menu, but it doesn't actually do anything. All your settings are in here. But there's nothing about firmware. And um, uh, stop recording and exit. So we go back here. And I mean, I'm on the network and it's saying, please log in. And I've tried to please log in and uh, it won't let me. Oh, so there's frequently asked questions in here, which I think is probably the same page we looked at before on the phone. We can rotate the screen, which is handy. Um, I'm guessing it's just OK. So it's just flipping it upside down in case you want this thing ceiling mounted. Knock the brightness down on this a bit so it's easier for the camera to see. Network settings, Ethernet, mobile. You can even set this up as a hotspot, apparently. Yeah, so you can set this up as a hotspot. <laughs> That's pretty handy. I um, I don't know what to do now. I need to try and figure out how I can get this online. Um, as it stands right now, let's see if we can get this onto settings. YouTube. Oh, I need to log in to... Um, YOLO before I can do any of the online stuff. So I need to go and figure out why that's not working because it just doesn't seem to want to let me. Let's give it another go. Nope, it's just sitting there doing nothing. And apparently that, that, that that's you lot. So I think I'm going to need to go and figure out how to update the firmware on this thing. Um, and then I can get it all set up. But, you know, assuming it streams the way we expect it to. Um, this doesn't look bad at all. I mean, it's nice being able to see and just touch on the screen and add video sources, 
try this again. Uh, oh, so there's the recording we just made. Is it going to add this this time? Oh, it did. So why? Oh, that's very strange. Okay. So it'll let me, it will read the file from the drone, um, but it won't let me add a second one. That's interesting. But yeah, now I can play the drone footage. Um, one thing that's a little bit frustrating about this, or not so much frustrating, or just it's just it's just the thing. Um, I can't scrub through this. I just kind of have to leave it playing. Um, I you know if I want to start this three minutes in, there's literally no way for me to be able to do that. Um, so yeah, so that's a little bit disappointing. Maybe that's fixed in the firmware update. Um, and that's what I'm going to try and figure out now and see if we can get it up and running. But given that that's basically as far as we can go for now until I can figure out the firmware and getting it online, um, I think that's it for now for the Yolo Box Pro. We'll have a proper look through it and what it can do and some more of my thoughts in a complete review coming soon. If you have any questions about the Yolo Box Pro or want me to test anything once I've got the new firmware installed, let me know in the comments below because it's an Android Based system, you know, there's new features coming to it all the time. And if I look at the firmware update history on the YOLO Live website, there's a new one coming out once or twice a month. So the last review you might have seen could be out of date already. So be sure to subscribe and hit the bell if you want a notification of when that video goes live. But for now, we're done. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>